All right, what's going on everyone? It is Greg and Matt here from Project Unbroken. So today we had a question in, they were kind of asking Matt, you know, how did you minimize your withdrawal symptoms from Suboxone? There was a previous video where Matt said, you know, he got down to two milligrams and uh, from there it was, it was minimal withdrawal symptoms. But what they didn't understand is at that time, Matt was actually chopping up the two milligram pills into smaller pieces. So he was actually on like 0.25 to 0.5 milligrams. So. But let's start from the beginning. So Matt, when you first started taking Suboxone, you were on what, 16 milligrams, eight milligrams, something like that to start? Yeah, it was 16 for a short period of time. Quickly brought that down to eight. Okay, and in that transition, was that about a three month period or so, yeah. you said? Yeah. And then in that period, was there any withdrawal symptoms? No. Okay. Not at all. So you started on about 16, went down to eight. What did you do from there about three months in? I kind of took it two milligrams off at a time for I, don't, I guess like eight to 12 week periods so two to three months okay kind of came down that way all right and did you feel any withdrawal symptoms when you were doing that no no i didn't feel any withdrawal symptoms the whole entire time i was on suboxone okay. like none all right so all right cool so he's doing the slow transition down which i did similar to methadone i'll post another video on that specifically my whole timeline so from the time you got to 16 till you were stabilized on eight how long did that take you about i know it's been you know seven eight nine ten years but that wasn't long about. it wasn't that long no so 16 to eight was i and i'll let me back up a little bit this was when i found the doctor that helped me do this, you know, the right way. Right. Because a couple times, and we've talked about this in other videos, we would find doctors that were kind of sketchy and give us like a month worth of Suboxone and then not answer their phone again. This was a legit run with a, a you know, a, a doctor who was invested in my recovery. And he made you go see like a, a counselor and all that type of stuff. I had to go see a psychiatrist. They ran the practice together. You, if, to get the Suboxone, you had to meet with the doctor. I think it was once every two weeks, you had to meet with the psychiatrist once every two weeks. So they had a really solid setup for recovery. Again, the deal was you could take Suboxone for as long as you, as we, you know, me and the doctor and the, the psychiatrist, uh, as long as we feel comfortable. You know, they didn't rush me off of it, I'll gotcha. say. So he started me, he said, let's start with, a, you, you'll have 16 milligrams a day I think they gave me like a, a two week supply at first or something like that. Um, again, I had to check in with them regularly. And I also, at this time, was very interested in getting off of everything. So I, it wasn't in my, I wasn't trying to sell them. I wasn't trying to, you know, mm -hmm. do whatever. So right away, um, after he gave me 16, I was like, I don't need this much. Like I was, it was, it was too much. I didn't need it at all. So. Um, he said, well, let's see how eight milligrams feels. I think it was like, you know, two halves a day or something like that. And it was, it was great. Okay. So what, like when you made that transition, can you ever remember like being nervous? Like, Oh my God, I was taking 16. I'm cutting that in half. I'm going to eight. Like, were you nervous about that? Not at all. Really? Again, because I knew if I told him, I was like, Hey, we, we pulled back too much. He would have immediately given me more. Okay. All right, cool. So you said you, know, you got from eight, from 16 milligrams, even down to two, you weren't feeling much. How, how long was that time period from the time you took 16 till you were stabilized on two? About how long? It was about a year. Okay. About a year. Yeah. So I think that's maybe one thing people missed. They're like, you know, Matt talks about how he didn't really withdraw that much coming off the box and he did it slow. You know, I think that's a mistake a lot of people make. Yeah. He wanted to come off, but he also knew that if he wanted to minimize withdrawal symptoms and you know increase his chance of success, that he had to do it slowly. So you were patient. Which Patience. I, think, which I was with you know same thing with methadone. All right. So when you got down to two, how did you take it from there, and how like how did you transition off it from there? So then again, had this conversation with the counselor, with the the, the physician, and I told him I'm going to kind of take this on an as needed basis. So. I think he cut me a script for about two milligrams a day, which again, it's a quarter of a pill. So it's a pretty tiny little piece. And I would take it in the morning and I felt fine throughout the day. Um, I would experiment sometimes with breaking that in half and I would take one milligram in the morning, see how I felt through the day. If I felt anxious or whatever, I would 
try to do my best to work my way through it with you know just meditation or exercise or whatever. If I really felt like the wheels were coming off, I would take the other one milligram, which again, in my mind, I'm not a doctor, but they both agreed that that was almost, almost uh, the doctor and the, phys uh, the, the counselor, or the physician and the psychologist also agreed that it was probably placebo at that point. Um, at least that second one milligram pill. So I kind of did that on and off. Honestly, I did that for probably a good three months. Okay. And then I remember my last day dose of Suboxone was like a, it was a Friday in, in March. And um, that, that was kind of it. So I know like we talked about this, you had that, uh, you know that's scary. You know you're relying on something for ten years between heroin and oxys and, and yeah. suboxone and whatever else. All of a sudden you're taking nothing. Like, did you withdraw at that point, or like what happened from there? So no, it, it's it's not withdrawing in the sense of I, I didn't physically get sick. Yeah. Um, I didn't have any shakes or you know like the cold sweats weren't really a thing. But there was serious anxiety. Yeah. I, I mean because. I, I knew I wanted this, but it was also, it was like you're jumping off a building with no parachute. So was it anxiety like you're freaking out because you don't have the medicine or you're freaking out just in general? Because I didn't have the medicine. Okay. And it was expected. I mean, again, I was lucky, lucky enough to have a really great support team who knew what was going on the whole time. They knew this was like a big big day like even you know the guy I was working for was very understanding about the whole thing not that I was like taking advantage of it but I think people kind of knew that I was going through a big transition at the yeah. time so it, I had that in my corner but um yeah it was it was it woke me up I think one of the things I, I know Matt pretty well I know the way he thinks I think the way you think as you're coming off plays a huge part into it because I can almost guarantee you that you were telling yourself well yeah, I got some anxiety, but I'm not on the floor shaking, and I'm not, I don't got the shits, and yeah. I don't got the cold sweats, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think, you know, your mindset, you know, he said he was doing meditation and all that. I'm sure he was, his mind was improved. As he came off, there was a very little bit of withdrawal symptoms, but you're able to get through it because you're kind of comparing it, and you know it could be way yeah. worse, and you're ready to get off. Yeah, and that's, I mean, again, we talk in some of our videos uh, past, a lot of the reason that we are... Uh, you know, abusing any sort of substance to begin with is because we don't like uncomfortable situations. Yeah. So that's something that you just have to expect and you have to learn to deal with without popping a pill or taking a drink or whatever your drug of choice is. So I knew that was coming. I did my best to kind of prepare myself, you know, by starting to practice meditation, by exercising regularly. I tried to improve my diet because um, I, I knew this was coming. I knew the day was coming and that stuff helped me tremendously so when it did come it's only natural if, you, if you're approaching this point in your own recovery where you're getting ready to get off suboxone or you know you're weaning off methadone um, use all the tools that you possibly can to make it easier on yourself like start to exercise a little bit that not to be anything crazy go for a jog it that stuff is just scientifically proven to help create those you know positive chemicals serotonin you know dopamine, all that stuff. It'll help you feel better as you start to approach that end date. I think one of the big mistakes people make is they're looking for like that immediate like, I'm just better. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I just want to stop now and I want to be better. It's not like people will go and they'll search for, you know, maybe like cough syrups they can take to just take away the withdrawal and then they're going to be fine. Yeah. It just doesn't happen like that. So I think to break it down, you know, what Matt did is he was very patient. You know, he put a plan in place. Uh, he was patient. He took, what, over a year to get off it all together. Yeah. And then when he came off, he started doing more positive things to change his mind. You know, he started getting in exercise, started doing some meditation. I've never done that. You know, it's something I want to try eventually. But he did, he, he was trying new things and just strengthening his mind, you know, strengthening his body, building his confidence. Then by the time he, you know, he was so slow, by the time he got to that smaller dose, 0.25 a day, half a day, whatever you're doing, milligram, it was so small and the withdrawal symptoms were so small that he was able to really get through it. Cause I mean, pretty much anxiety was it. I mean, a little bit of no sleep, you remember? No, not no. even. No, I mean, it, compared to heroin withdrawal or whatever it is, it was minimal. Again, it's just a little bit of nervousness, but you gotta kind of get used to that stuff. 
Um, and that's just going to prepare yeah. you for life without, you know, a crutch, essentially. I know when I was coming off methadone, I didn't sleep for shit for a long time. <laughs> yeah, dude. So that surprises me. But yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, I guess that's how Matt got, you know, time, patience, you know, not expecting it to just happen like that and, you know, slowly building himself up and probably not the answer most people want to hear, but. Unfortunately, but th there's, it's an easier way to do it. Yeah. I mean, you can, uh, you know, I know a lot of people that try to go cold, cold turkey, we've tried it. Yeah, and it's just like you're time. jumping and you're like, no way, this is way too drastic of a change. It's a lot on your mind. I think you're just better chances of success with a slower You know, pace. we've talked about like when you take your time like that, so you're on it for a year, year and a half, in that time you're able to distance yourself from that old life. You know, instead of even if you jump off and you're successful and you go through the withdrawal, Say you go through two weeks, and after two weeks to a month, you're feeling okay, but that's really, you've only been away from that lifestyle for about a month. Yeah. It's really easy to fall back in after that, whereas if you're going out of it for a year, year and a half, you put in a lot more time and effort. You have you know? new habits. Yeah, you right. have new exactly. uh, people around you. You know, hopefully in that time, you have been able to get away from bad influences in your life. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, honestly, by the time that I was getting off of Suboxone, I wouldn't even... I mean, I guess I could have if I wanted to, but it would have been way more difficult for me to find heroin or pills or whatever yeah. at that point. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, so anything else on minimizing withdrawal? I mean, that's no, pretty no. much your whole story. Yeah, I think that's about it. All right, cool. So hope you all enjoyed this video. Let us know what you think. You know, thank Matt if you, if you get the chance. He's, he's uh, put his story out there for you all, and we'll see you all in the next video.